This is WKBN, built on a foundation a quarter century deep. A proud, busy, complex building set at Youngstown's southern edge. It started small with a seven and a half watt homemade transmitter in a cluttered living room. Today it houses three complete broadcasting stations, three pioneers, WKBN, WKBN-FM, and WKBN-TV. It's a building full of equipment, microphones, lights, projectors, desks, and typewriters, and people, busy people hounded by the clock, the dictatorial merciless clock. It's a building full of sound, sounds recorded on plastic tape, Sound channeled through the quiet tubes of radio transmitters. Sounds cut into the grooves of a giant record. Sounds carefully watched, controlled. Meters, recorders, microphones, transmitters, typewriters, people. It takes them all, and they're all here for you to see. And to put it all together and make it work takes other things, like patience, imagination and integrity, which we hope you'll also see. The reception lobby is large and friendly. A mural depicts the rapid growth of radio and television at WKBN. A switchboard that's open 17 hours a day receives and sends out a lot of calls. People do talk back to the radio and television too. The comings and goings start early and go on until late. This is a day and night, Sundays and holidays business. If you've come to see the president of WKBN, it's hard to say where you might find him. Warren P. Williamson, Jr. and his brother, Joseph Williamson, have been planning and building Radio Youngstown a long time. The blueprints are getting a little dog-eared, but still the planning and building goes on. Complex equipment must be constantly checked and maintained. The 5,000 watt WKBN radio transmitter beams out a clear signal to far corners of Ohio and Pennsylvania. Government licensed engineers are on duty every second it's on the air. This is the unit that transmits the signal you hear at 570 kilocycles. Engineers deal in decibels, kilocycles, in sound, in pictures. Sometimes the sound are made permanent, recorded on 16-inch transcriptions. The engineer in radio master control also deals in sounds, sounds that must be the right length and start and stop on time. Five transcription turntables in the master control room give him flexibility and speed. Or the sound is recorded on hundreds of feet of thin plastic tape there are three big tape recording machines in the WKBN engineering department. Any one of the three can be used for either recording or playing back the recording on the air. Once the tape has been used, the sound can be erased and the tape used again and again. In television, each camera must be warmed up and carefully adjusted prior to use on the air. If you think your TV set is complicated, take a look at the controls on this electronic marvel. While one engineer sets up the camera, he communicates with a second engineer viewing the camera's picture on a monitor in the control room. But equipment costs money, and to pay for it and its operation, the hours and half hours and quarter hours and minutes of each broadcast day must be sold. The station director and the advertising agencies keep the long distance operators busy. Radio and television, like any other business, depends on salesmen to sell their products. In the rapidly growing and constantly changing business of radio and television, however, just keeping up with the product is quite a chore. But selling is only part of the job. Accounts must be serviced regularly. Meetings keep the salesmen in touch with the latest information on both network and local program schedules. There is film to be checked and scheduled. 
Information on new copy for a client must be reviewed with a copywriter. Television artwork must be prepared for a studio commercial. There are wheels within wheels, a whole structure of complicated organization, an interlocking and interdependent maze of people and equipment that can be put into operation with a single piece of paper. The piece of paper is an advertising contract. It may call for spot announcements in radio's Breakfast with Bill program. It may be for sponsorship of a newscast. It may be for a commercial in a late evening feature on television, or an eight second spot over slide following Godfrey. But whatever it calls for, when it's signed, the wheels within wheels start turning. The contract goes to the traffic department, where a bookkeeping system that deals with seconds and minutes keeps track of every commercial program and announcement on both radio and television. The accounts of both local advertisers and national accounts, including network programs, pass through the wheels of traffic. Then into the program department, where more paperwork must be done. Messages from radio and television networks, weekly schedules for newspaper listings, letters, logs, and memos. Program schedules must be outlined weeks in advance but still be subject to instant change. Combining the information from the traffic department on commercial programs and announcements with the program schedules produces the daily operating logs, one for radio, one for TV. The program department includes all persons on the staff involved with the production of material used on radio or television. Its members represent a variety of skills and specialties. Program production can involve, for instance, catching up with the correspondence from listeners and viewers. Or it might mean conducting an audition for a new announcer. Is he reading too fast or too slow? Too much punch, or does he drag? Is he stumbling because he's extra nervous, or does he always gulp his words like that? The announcer must combine friendliness with conviction, do a selling job and be sincere, and with all that, must pass the goldfish bowl scrutiny of the audition. Picking the voices that represent WKBN on the air is production. Production is timing. The clock is both an enemy and a friend, and completely impartial. 30 seconds is always 30 seconds, and the words must be made to fit. In broadcasting, seconds and minutes are vital, so the clock is master. The easygoing voice on the air is well-timed and what it has to say must fit into the segment of time allotted. But ideas are just as important. So rehearsal means not only making it fit, but making it say what it was intended to say, in a way the listener can understand. Production means a lot of things. Production is keeping up with sports assembling the facts and the figures from all of the activities in a notably sports-minded area and putting them together for presentation. It means hours on the telephone running down the rumor you heard in the barber shop. And, without a second to spare, changing from a man in shirt sleeves banging out copy on a typewriter to a man in a jacket, calm and collected, ready to bring you up to the minute on the latest scores. Stand by in the studio. Radio broadcasting starts early in the morning and one of the earliest to arrive is the farm editor with transportation appropriate to the job. Transportation that takes him far and wide over a six county area. The Ohio, Pennsylvania, WKBN area. Gathering the stories he presents on the air. There's mail to be opened and read, 
a dispute over how far a grasshopper jumps or the newest method of blasting stumps brings in scorching comments. The latest report from the Weather Bureau must be read. And a few minutes later, he's on the air, ad-libbing his way through another morning. And that evening in the TV studio, standing in a rustic setting that seems out of place amidst the electronic welter. Production might mean skaters in front of the TV camera, a hometown family whose hobby turned into skilled showmanship. Interesting local people interviewed on a local station. Like the man says, it does take all kinds. Ben is the TV director, one eye on the monitors, another on his script, and still another on the clock. It's true, they do have three eyes. And like engineers, they sometimes wish they had three hands to push all the switches. Production is the voice on the radio, the announcer you hear at home, and production is also the copy he reads. And the place where the copy comes from, the continuity department. This is where the commercial copy is written, checked, put in order, and assembled. Many words are spoken, so many words must be written. They're having a special on men's shirts tomorrow only. All the copy has to be changed. Radio and television, though, are fast. There's no type to set. So the copy's changed, and the shirts are sold. Continuity, like all production, follows the daily log, so the day's copy is checked with the log. The right copy, the right time, the right length. It has to be. And after it's all checked, start on copy for the following day. The words and pictures keep going out, so must the copy. Production is music. 30,000 selections filed cross-indexed. The latest releases added daily. The out-of-date ones removed. The librarian must know music and know exactly what music is used every day. It was only the sound we were concerned with, but now the picture has been added. Production can mean the art department, where the commercial slides and films, illustrations, charts and pictures of all kinds are planned and executed, including all artwork and photography. The small slide measuring two by two inches and a giant TV studio set are all in a day's work. Artwork for a slide when it's first made up is about the same size as it appears to be on your TV screen. But paradoxically, it must first be reduced in size before it can be again enlarged on your screen. The art is mounted on a board and lit. Then it's photographed, reducing the size to an area about the same as that of a frame of 35 millimeter film. The negative is printed on a small square piece of glass, precisely centered and masked. It goes into a file in the projection room, then into the projector, ready for use on the air. If the show calls for cartoon figures eight feet tall, well, that too is a job for the art department. Cut them out of wallboard and add charcoal. Nothing to it if you're an artist. When the news department needs pictures, the photographer gets them, and he has to get them quickly. News is highly perishable. 
The making of movies is another function of the art and photography department. This time, a film commercial is shot in the TV studio. Production is the film department, where the footage runs in mileage. Here again, a new department with the addition of the picture to the sound. There's film coming in every hour of the day. Unlike recorded music, which is kept in a semi-permanent file, most film is shipped in, shown, and shipped out immediately. So there's a bookkeeping job to be done, almost as soon as the shipping carton is opened. Then it's previewed. Here's a girl who goes to the movies every day and likes it. Then the film editor goes to work. Where's the film program scheduled? How long is it? Is it in good running condition? What cuts must we make? Today's run of film. And here again, there are no days skipped. Every day a TV station uses film. Particular reel of film is next. Check the card, the time, and the title. Now thread the projector. This is a 16 millimeter projector, standard size in most TV stations. The projector itself is operated by remote control from the master control panel. Once the film is threaded, the engineer at master control need only push a button to get the film on the air. The film is set. The director cues the announcer for the opening announcement. Calls for the film to start, and it's on the air. Going from the projector into a film camera, and then after a quick trip through the control panel into the television transmitter, the sixth UHF transmitter on the air in the United States, the first in Ohio. Yes, production is many things, like news. A member of the WKBN news staff is back from covering a story with the facts in his notes and an interview on the portable tape machine. There's another angle to cover. The news director remembers a story somewhere in the files. See if you can find it. The cross-index of news stories goes back a long time. There should be something in it. There is, in fact, several background stories. Which one do we follow up? The facts start fitting together like a jigsaw puzzle. For television, just the facts are not enough. We should have slides on this in the file, too. We're lucky there are several. Let's take a look. Pick the best one. The file of news slides includes both local pictures and those of a national news picture syndicate. The newsman handling the next radio newscast needs more facts. Get them by phone. And while the local stories take shape, the teletypes of United Press and Associated Press 
bring in the reams of copy on national and international news. It must be sorted, rewritten, and fed into the stream of news. It's all polished up, put together to the last second. A short walk to the studio. And the news is in your home. CBN has its own public relations department to promote goodwill, to advertise, to conduct station tours, to let clients, listeners, and viewers know what the pioneer stations are doing. Pamphlets, brochures, booklets, and publications of all kinds pass through the mill of promotion. Thousands of mailing pieces go out annually to national advertisers and agencies. Let's watch a television show go together from the beginning up to the moment it goes on the air. The prop and storage room in the basement holds furniture, sets, and a great deal of what may be described only as stuff. We are getting together the props for the next show coming up. Everything from a telephone to a phony cake may be called for and usually provided. We start with a bare studio. The door goes here. At WKBN, the flats are wallboard mounted on mobile racks, a different flat on each side of the rack. They are quickly and easily moved. Because time is always precious and storage space always at a minimum, television scenery must have versatility and flexibility. You don't want a fireplace? Turn it around then. It's a bookcase. We'll need a nice big window right here to let in the air-conditioned ozone and perhaps a ray or two of incandescent sunlight. Drapes are decorative and useful in covering gaps in the wall. Then comes the furniture, chairs, tables, lamps, pictures, and the bric-a-brac. The TV set man must arrange his furniture, not only according to the dictates of good taste, he must also allow for the movement of bulky cameras, microphone booms, and production people, and at the same time, keep in mind the problems of lighting the set. Once the set is in place, the director moves in to decide on lighting. A grid of steel pipes, 14 and a half feet above the studio floor, holds a maze of lights, from tiny spotlights to huge scoops used for flood lighting. Each light is numbered, and for each show, a list of the lights to be used is made up and checked. The list of numbers goes to the light control board, which looks like a giant telephone switchboard. The proper lights are plugged into the board by groups so that one or two switches will control the complete lighting. Final adjustments are made from the catwalk, which runs on the light grid. The lights are set, and now it's time for rehearsal. The women's director, whose show we're setting up, gets instructions on how she's to hold material for a close-up. Let's check this on camera. It looks okay. The picture portion of the show is rehearsed. Now how about the sound? Most television programs use a boom mic, which sometimes is, but never should be, seen. The operator weaves his telescoping boom through the jungle of lights and cables, placing the microphone close enough to pick up the voice, but not so close that it's in camera range.
Now we're ready. The engineers are in studio control, the audio man, the shader, and the switcher. The director works at a desk overlooking the control equipment and monitors. 27 years later, here we are with Indians in the front yard. A long way from the cluttered living room in a house on Youngstown's Auburndale Avenue, where the little homemade transmitter beamed out WKBN's first sound. But today is then, some of the most important things are the simplest. Like the reassuring voice from the radio early in the morning that says, Good morning. This is WKBN in Youngstown, Ohio, returning to the air. Broadcasting on a frequency of 570 kilocycles with 5,000 watts power. This is WKBN, Youngstown's pioneer in AM radio, FM radio, and television. Here to serve you in the future as it has in the past. Built on a foundation a quarter century deep.